we went uh, as a family to the U.S. Open men's finals. And I mean, every like the tennis is definitely woke. It is woke. Um, it's like, it was all about Billie Jean King and equal pay and like all the messaging and Moderna signs everywhere, which not, you don't have to be woke to be pro Moderna, but it was a little in your face with the Moderna messaging. It's like, you know what? A lot of people, including yours truly have had bad experiences with the vaccines and I don't need to look at it all over the place. And I'm just trying to, trying to watch a tennis match, but okay. Yeah. Then we go out, they don't sing the national anthem, which I talked about with Dershowitz. It's apparently the day before 9-11, they did, they thought maybe we'll skip the national anthem. Instead, we got lift every voice and sing. So we got sort of the so-called black national anthem, but not the actual an national anthem. All right. And then we had this amazing tennis match between Novak Djokovic of Serbia and Daniil Medvedev of Russia. And he was the third, he was one of three Russians who made it into the finals, if you count the uh, all the singles and the doubles finals, men and women. And what they've done, Marcelo, as you've probably seen this for the past, since the Ukrainian conflict, is they've blanked out the little Russian flag. You know, so you see the yeah. Serbian flag next to Novak, and then you don't see anything. You just see a gray triangle <laughs> next yeah. to the Russian players. I'm sorry, it's ridiculous. Medvedev did not cause the invasion of Ukraine. I'm sure he's got a lot of family and friends there who he loves and remembers. That's where he got his start in tennis. Why are we trying to pretend the Russian people themselves, including this tennis player, are to blame and that the blanking out of this flag means anything at all? Yeah, it's hilarious that you bring this up because I'm watching the U.S. Open all the way through, we're, we're not big tennis fans, but certainly get riled up um, for the big majors. And my wife looked and she said, what country is he representing? And she <laughs> right. saw the little gray square at the bottom. I said, I think Transylvania, the way that they're trying to depict it. Like they literally <laughs> like they just blanked him out like he's Dracula. So I don't know what this is. Yes. But, you know, if you really want to go down that lane, down that hole, uh, the whole representation conversation and what we call woke right now is really an attempt to keep people controlled, keep the status quo, let the haves and have nots continue to widen in the divide, which allows those in power to even have more power. And for anyone who gets into these conversations and doesn't think with that mindset perspective, uh, usually you'll get sabotaged and usually you'll get suckered into it. Um, we're trying to really leave complex thought out of all these conversations and representations just so it could be simplified. Or you left or you right, right? You're Democrat, Republican. And because they simplify it, it forces you to make a blanket decision that really doesn't encompass all things that you need to respect, like... Uh, this guy did not invade any country. So no. this is a sad state of affairs for those who speak the truth, those who look for the truth, um, look like the outliers, look like the ones who are in the wrong when in the actual pursuit of the right is what we're all in seek of. So I just laugh at these conversations. It's, it's really, it's really just, it, it's disheartening when I look at my kids because I'm like, I hope, they have the same compass that I was given to navigate through this BS. And if not, mm -hmm. they'll get lost in the sauce like so many people are. Well, they're going to have today. it. They're going to have it because I'm sure you talk to them about it. I mean, that's our kids were there. Our kids were definitely rooting for Djokovic. And I was rooting for Djokovic to some extent, too. But I was kind of in a position where I was like, I can't lose because I would be happy to see either one of these guys win. And one of the reasons why I liked Medvedev is because nobody was cheering for him. <laughs> Not nobody, but the crowd is clearly with Novak. Yeah. And yeah. I felt bad for him. Like, yes, he's been a little spicy, but so is Novak. I mean, they both can sort of, in the John McEnroe-esque way of kind of getting in somebody's face if they don't like what the crowd's doing or what the ump is doing. They'll, they're, they're not shy, which I also like, but there's really, I think, one main reason to dislike Medvedev, and that is he's from Russia. <laughs> and there's like, <laughs> again, there's really no reason to hold that against the guy. So I was sure to clap for him whenever he got a good point. I kind of felt bad for him that he didn't win, but I was thrilled to see the GOAT. I think it's clear no Novak is the GOAT. And one of the reasons that many of us were rooting for him is because he too got 
got backlash and bounced out of the U.S. Open and the Australian Open last year because he refused to get the vax. They were calling him Aaron Rodgers of uh, your world, NFL world, was there. I, I would say what team he's for, but I don't remember. He just started with our the New York Jets team. Now. He with, he's with the Jets. Okay. <laughs> anyway, he was with another team before. But anyway, he went, he posted <laughs> Novax Djokovic, which is kind of fun. Um, anyway, in an incredibly ironic moment that Clay Travis noticed, he was, Novak, of course, his winning shot, was the, the shot of the day sponsored by Moderna. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Well, we'll take you to the Moderna shot of the day, and it was saving the match point. point. Oh, the match, match point to get to number 24. There were a lot of shots that, that were highly impactful. But here's the final one. Moderna. I mean, but, you know, he was totally vilified. Totally vilified. It wasn't just your ban from these tournaments, you know, for absolutely no purpose whatsoever. But he was written up as some sort of a demon by many in the press who thought it, how gross this is that this elite athlete who didn't know what consequences there might be to the vaccine refused to get it. Yeah. And that's what's amazing about it. Uh, first of all, you, you, we just can't fly over the double down by Moderna. Moderna shot of the day, too. Like, it's just <laughs> hilarious right there for no back. And then. Good point. You know what's so crazy about when people want to talk about representation and the openness and it's tennis especially, how do they fall victim to this other than the capitalism that plays? Just take any check that comes. Um, it's a global sport. Uh, and I was actually already in a sad state because Carlos Alcaraz wasn't in the finals, and that's my guy. Yeah. Uh, we were privy of watching him against – Nadal a few years ago in Indian Wells and was like, he's next. And now he's now, he's but he obviously didn't make it to the finals. Yeah, in, a robot in disguise. I mean, this guy <laughs> is locked in when he is playing. I love him to death. But um, you see this with the Moderna shot of the day and how we treated Novak when we ask our athletes, we ask people to make a decision, but vilify them for the decisions that they make. So it's really not even an option. It's not open. It's actually closed. And that's what I don't like when everyone around me tells me to respect everyone. And I'll say, I already do. For you to even ask me that, maybe you're telling on yourself. Maybe this is a projection. And then when you choose something that they don't su support, then they come after you. So, you know, me being who I am and some of my stances over the years have been attacked. But people don't understand, I grew up in a gang territory, gang neighborhood where there were Crips and Bloods. And I had to quickly realize that in order to make it out, I couldn't be either. So I'm not going to be forced to ever choose a side. So I know how to get around all of the landmines that these people and in their ignorance actually put in front of me. So when I look at it on a global scale now and how it's been so incentivized, it's laughable. It's almost childlike to me, taking me to my childhood. Are you going to wear this color? Or are you going to wear this color? Are you going to think this way or that way? And if not, you don't support what I support. I try to come and kill you. And that's where we are in this sad state of affairs. I just shake my head and keep speaking my truth. I always wanted to grow my own vegetable garden. And now I have a Lomi and it's changed the way I think about food waste. Lomi transforms my garbage into gold at the press of a button. It's fun. Lomi is a countertop electric composter that turns food scraps into dirt in under four hours. Now I'm loving the composting. Plus it's made cooking at home even more fun. Well, it's made it fun, period. It wasn't fun. <laughs> now it's a little fun. There's no food rotting in the garbage, smelling up the kitchen. Thanks to Lomi, you have to take out the trash far less frequently. You can turn your waste into nutrient-rich dirt that you can then feed to your plants, your lawn, or your garden. All your food scraps, your plant clippings, even those leftovers in the back of the fridge can go boom into the garden, helping grow more nutritious food right in your own backyard. Whether you want to stay making a positive environmental impact or you just want to grow a beautiful garden, Lomi is perfect. Head to Lomi.com slash MK, L-O-M-I dot com slash MK. Use the promo code MK to get 50 bucks off your order. That's $50 off when you head to L-O-M-I dot com slash MK. Use the promo code MK at checkout for your discount. Turn your food waste into dirt with the press of a button 
thanks to Lomi. Use the code MK to save 50 bucks. Lomi.com slash MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.